Hey everybody, welcome to Technique Tuesday. Sarah with you today. I am gonna be sharing with you some fun techniques that you can use featuring Distress Oxide inks and stencils and some Distress Glaze. If you've never used Distress Glaze before or you're not quite sure what to do with it, this is the video for you. I have two colors of Distress Oxide ink here. One is Antique Linen and one is Speckled Egg. So I'm going to put the stencil here in the corner of my white cardstock. This is a basil coconut swirl cardstock, which is my favorite for all sorts of ink types of um, applications. Not so much with water, but definitely with inks and stamping, things like that. I have inked up the outer edge of the stencil with the antique linen, and now I'm doing the inside of the stencil with some speckled egg, but I'm not gonna fully, I'm not gonna do the stencil fully, so I'm just going to kind of start, you can see here, more saturated towards the outside edge, and then kind of just let the ink run out naturally. Once I have each corner done, I'm then gonna go ahead and um, I have a piece of printer paper there that is folded and I'm gonna just go ahead right away and cover my corner with the embossing glaze. This is the embossing glaze speckled egg. This is going to create a beautiful, gorgeous border for my page today. So I'm just gonna cover the corner with the embossing glaze, flick off what is unused, put the embossing glaze away before it goes all over my desk, and then I'm gonna hit my corner with the heat tool. I am going to repeat all those steps you just saw on all four corners of my white cardstock. Some tips, if you wanna give this a try at home, at your house, just make sure that you do this one corner at a time. Distress Oxide ink dries slower, so it will catch on to the embossing glaze and it will hold it, but it doesn't dry as slow as a regular super sticky embossing ink, which means if you try to do all of your ink blending and then try to put the embossing glaze on the um, first corner that you ink blended, maybe dry but look at that isn't that beautiful love it so make sure you do corner 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 and because you are adding heat to your paper your paper will warp just a bit uh, if you're be very careful when you apply the heat apply it to the front apply it to the back flip between the two um, let your heat gun sit and get nice and hot before you bring it over to the paper, these will uh, lessen the warping and help with to make sure that you don't burn your paper or that you don't warp your paper too much by adding that heat. So I've just taken my stencil, I've put it into the bottom of my bottom corner and I'm gonna do exactly the same steps. Antique linen around the outside edge and then I'm going to take another blending brush. I'm gonna saturate it and really load it up with the speckled egg. I'm gonna put the speckled egg in the center of the stencil and then let the ink naturally fade out into the middle of my page. This is a handmade paper, which means every corner is not gonna look exactly the same. Don't fret about it. It doesn't have to be perfect does not need to all look the same. You want it to look differently. You want this to look like you handmade it. Another really great thing to keep in mind is that remember this is a background for a scrapbook page. So again, does not have to be absolutely perfect. I'm taking another stencil here, which is an embroidered snowflake stencil from Catherine Puller. And I just went ahead and added a little more stenciled snowflakes to my background, just these two. And again, you can even see in this regard, both of these snowflakes do not look the same. One is much lighter, one is much darker. 
but this, these snowflakes are just going to peek out from around my photograph. So when you have the finished layout and it's done, you're not going to notice these imperfections. This is a background. I want to frame my handmade background with some pattern paper. So I'm just using my tonic trimmer and I'm going to gut this paper, which means I'm just going to cut a big square out of the middle because I only want a little bit to frame the edges of my layout today. I'm going to take my background paper and I'm going to hand cut a quarter inch from all four sides. I am cutting a quarter inch from each side of this layout because that's going to keep my corners even. Um, I wanted to keep as much of the color and ink blending as I could right there on the page and the best way to do that and still achieve the frame that I want is to just go ahead and measure out and cut a quarter inch from each side of my layout. I'm going to get some extra sticky tape here and I'm going to mount my ink blended handmade background onto this pattern paper. I'm going to be creating my layout using Simple Stories Winter it's winter woods. It's actually the simple vintage winter woods. That's the collection that I am going to be creating with today. I decided not to cut into any of the large 12 by 12 sheets of paper, but rather to go ahead and cut down a couple six by eight patterns. The scale of those patterns and the style of those patterns would work really well for this type of a layout where you have lots of layers and clusters. So you can see here I'm not measuring. Um, I'm just, I think I cut one to six by six square. I cut one to four by six. And I think that, that um, the white one with the kind of teal greeny snowflakes is a four by six too, but it is on the diagonal or the vertical instead of the horizontal. I'm gonna go ahead and rough up all the edges of these patterns and then ink the edges using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. Uh, this is gonna provide some separation and just a lovely feel to this layout, a little bit more textured, a little bit more interest. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of stack up and stagger all of these patterns right into the middle of my page. You can see those kind of extra snowflakes that I ink blended are just gonna peek out from these layers. And the other snowflakes that I've ink blended are actually gonna provide almost like a falling snow effect that's gonna lead your eye right into the middle of the page. This was why I did the ink in the lighter around the outside edges and then darker going in because it will kind of lead your eye right there into the middle of my, of my page and right to my photo, which is where I want it to go anyway. So I was thinking about putting my photo here. I'm actually gonna switch that and put it on the other side a little bit just because I felt like my niece who's in this photo was facing towards the right. And by putting her on the right, it kind of made her look like she was looking out into the great beyond of the page. So I'm gonna move her around in a minute. I layered in the three by four card from the six by eight paper pad. And now I'm gonna go through some of the die cuts and I'm gonna add that cute little bird because he fit so well up there, just like perched right on the top. And then I'm also going to add one of these wood grain, a couple, a lot of the wood grain snowflakes in this collection, pretty much because I'm kind of obsessed with them. They're really unique and fun and cute. Love them. I'm gonna use some of these foam stickers to create my title. So I'm gonna use two. I'm gonna use the icy one and the cold one. And so that's gonna act as my title, icy cold. I loved how they kind of fit in together well. They don't look like they're two separate foam stickers because the Y kind of just goes down and accents the cold. It worked out really well. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of the hearts from the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I pop those up on some foam tape for some extra dimension on my page. I'm gonna add some of the brads to this page. So these adhesive brads from Simple Stories are kind of like a new favorite of mine. 
I had never ordered them before or played with them before. Um, I wasn't a big Brad person when Brad's were really popular, but I decided to try try this pack, and I tried a couple other packs, uh, or they came with a cherry box, and I kind of discovered them, I guess. Absolutely love them now. Um, and so I just added three. Next, I'm going to go through the sticker book, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of these cute little phrase stickers. So phrase stickers are something that always trip me up. They're something that I have to make myself use. I love them. I purchase them, and then I forget about them. And then I use all the product, and I end up with all the phrase stickers left over. I would love to know if any of you have the same problem with a product. Do you have a product that you really like and enjoy and love in theory, but then when you go to a scrapbook, you tend to not use them and they seem to just kind of build up in your stash. That's kind of what happens to me and tiny free stickers. So when I flipped through the sticker book and I saw the free stickers, I knew right away we needed to use bunches of them on this page as many as fit with our story and the photo. I'm also going to add some more wood grain snowflakes because these are wonderful and I can use, I can add snowflakes to wintry pages all day long. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of cut them in half, tuck them in here and there. Can I just say how proud I am of myself for using all those phrase stickers? That worked out awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you will give this technique a try. It is fun and look at the results. I love how this page turned out with those beautiful snowflakes in the background. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us here at A Cherry on Top's YouTube channel for Technique Tuesday. Bye.